and on we go um, to the, the neoliberal phase where um, public transport was corporatized and then the, um, the yellow bus company which was owned by the ARA, the biggest uh, bus company uh, in New Zealand were, was forcibly privatized and then we had a, a, a Thatcherite model for running public transport and what what happened was patronage continued to decline. So about 10 years ago that started to change. Um, uh, congestion became so chronic that even the, the most hardcore advocates of, of roads only did concede well there was perhaps a place for public transport and the Auckland Regional Council in particular but Auckland City as well and, and the other councils put a major effort in uh, to reinvest in public transport and slowly but surely that is starting to pay dividends and so uh, rail patronage was about 1 million passenger trips per year 10 years ago it's now over 10 million passenger trips per year and given and it's increasing um, in quantum leaps and so over the last year it increased by 1 million passenger trips per year um, in one year and on that uh, given that momentum Auckland is likely to go past Wellington within the next year or so as the number one uh, rail city in the country um, uh, bus services which is still the major as as the ghost if you like of Auckland's tramway is still the major provider um, 78 percent of passenger trips uh, are carried by buses um, and that that continues to improve especially rapid transit so th the aspects of public transport that have been successful um, have been rail but also the North Shore busway um, and there's a bit about two million passenger trips per year on that now and at peak time about 40 percent of people crossing the Harbour Bridge are coming on the, the North Shore busway. So what, what, what that means is that they're, they're, the old idea that Aucklanders will never get out of their cars um, has been given the lie uh, and now people are starting to realise there are uh, fundamental um, infrastructural reasons why Aucklanders became, why Auckland became a car city. It, uh, people have argued that the, the sudden collapse um, in patronage in the mid 50s was because people f suddenly fell in love en masse with their cars but that is not accurate. To be fair Aucklanders and, and indeed New Zealanders had a high level of, of, public, of car, private car ownership but the cultural pattern, uh, the pattern for working commuters was to leave the car in the garage or the garage um, except for the weekend and then go off to the beach or so on and commute by mainly by by tram and when the trams were physically removed you can see the clear correlation of a sudden collapse and so uh, it, it just proves really the the saying um, build it and they will come and if there, there are facilities Auckland does just like anyone else will use them and so that is an extremely encouraging aspect of 2011 um, and as I say um, it correlates and is part of, of, of a positive transition we see in Auckland regarding um, facilities, amenities and Auckland starting to think of itself as a, you know, a significant city, a significant but different, obviously quite small but a, a world-class city in its own way um, and that its physical infrastructure and physical amenity uh, that we have here should somehow aspire to, to the wonderful physical uh, natural environment with the, with the two harbours or three harbours, the Hauraki Gulf and so on, sublime uh, a natural environment, natural setting. But I think the, the feeling is um, why can't we make our built environment um, aspire to that sort of level. So it's, it's a very encouraging time but there, um, there are uh, some threats to this renaissance in public transport and civic amenity. The first one is, is the sheer cost. 
Um, this is a major problem, and uh, I have some ideas on this which require further um, research. But I believe there is a, we have a cultural economic problem in Auckland with the cost of infrastructure. Um, there is a construction duopoly in New Zealand, which means our construction costs have always been relatively high, even though our labour costs, you know, c compared to Australia, even though our labour costs are significantly lower. But here are some, some inter this was really brought home to me earlier this year um, in regard to the uh, debate, if you can call it that, over the, the government's non-approval of the central rail link, which is essential um, if Auckland is to have a viable um, rail system. Um, I believe that the harbour crossing was resurrected as a sort of a red herring. Um, of course, people are always more than willing to, to be anxious and debate the, uh, uh, supplementary harbour crossings and the bridge and so on and so forth, especially North Shore people. And so um, th this was discussed by the Auckland Regional Council, uh, the Auckland City Council, the North Shore City Council, and what was called uh, Transit New Zealand in 2008. And after about two decades of studies on the harbour crossing, a, an end point was reached, a consensus was built, um, the, the route, um, the corridor, um, the mode was all decided on, uh, a, a road and rail tunnel under the harbour and it was and it would be required perhaps in 2030 and it was everyone signed and sealed the deal and put it back on the shelf the minister decided to reopen it and um, ask for another study and 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 the studies suggested that a second bridge a parallel bridge would be cheaper so the parallel bridge would be uh, cost only three to four billion dollars whereas the the road rail tunnel would, would cost four to five billion dollars and I think we were we were meant to draw a conclusion. But at the same time it became clear to Aucklanders that in China a 42 kilometre Jiao bridge cost 1.8 billion dollars and that uh, uh, an interoceanic highway between Brazil and Ecuador 2,600 kilometres was 2.75 billion US and all right, that you may say these are these are not Western countries or kind of third worldish. Though that, all of that is changing, um, but then again, there's a Milo Bridge in France, which is the highest bridge in the world. It's a, an engineering and architectural masterpiece, and that costs 400 million euro. So you have to wonder about how come our kilometre harbour bridge, the cheap option, is three to four billion. And I think everywhere you look, um, that is a problem. And I think we need to analyse why those costs are apparently <coughs> so out of kilter with the world market, not just in, in the developing places like China, but in, in, in Western Europe. We need to, to analyse why that is. The other problem is a political one, and that is that the present Minister, Minister of Transport has seemed to set his face against major investment in uh, PT, especially in rail, and seems to, on, uh, 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 on the contrary, seems to be a, a, an extremely passionate supporter of state highways and road building. Though it would seem that, you know, in the, the peak oil era, um, with declining uh, traffic flows, it's a bit out of date. But nevertheless, that, that is also a major problem because in his government policy statement, he had three billion plus for state highways and it's tw per year. And for, um, for public transport, uh, 20 million to 60 million per year. Um, to be fair, rail projects uh, are not included in that, uh, but there, is, there seems to be no intention at all um, to pursue them, except, uh, to be fair and accurate, the electrif electrification program that the ARC and its subsidiary ARTA uh, built and, um, and lobbied for from the previous government uh, after 18 months delay 
um, where the minister reviewed it and set it aside and then gave it to Kiwi Rail and it's come back again, um, will go ahead. Um, I, I guess that that's something we can take comfort from. But we still have major challenges ahead. And probably dealing, we are still dealing with the, the same mindset, institutional mindset, political mindset, philosophical mindset that saw, that led to the collapse of rapid transit or, or rail public transport and all public transport in Auckland from the 1960s on. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.